Hi friends, so far we are learning about the hypervisors in cloud computing. So today we are going to see a new hypervisor architecture known as the Zen architecture. So in the previous video I discussed regarding the Hyper-V Microsoft architecture. So today we will going to cover this big entire architecture of the cloud computing. So to understand this stay tuned to my channel this is Ranjiraj and you are streaming on the study beast. So first of all, uh, after considering this big diagram, this diagram is a bit complicated as compared to the Hyper-V since it was very small and this is very big. Now uh, there is not much complexity involved in drawing this diagram but you need to understand each and every components and how they uh, interconnect and uh, communicate with each other that you need to understand first in this entire architecture. So basically uh, like the uh, Hyper-V architecture we have the individual virtual machines uh, in this. We have the three uh, VMs and we have the uh, Zen hypervisor as a VMM virtual machine monitor and then we have the hardware and the physical machine and all the underlying hardware itself for the device and the memory access. Now talking about the Zen architecture it was initially uh, developed at the Cambridge University uh, that's for general information. Uh, then this Zen hypervisor is basically based on the micro kernel design now why micro kernel design because uh, it mainly can operate or it can run different kind of os's in parallel uh, not in a pipeline manner but in parallel at the same time now uh, this uh, like you have the vmm uh, like in the hyper v also you had the vmm so vmm stands for the virtual machine monitor now in this zen hypervisor is a type of vmm in that uh, it was an example of Hyper-V. So VMM, example of VMM are hypervisor of Zen and Hyper-V hypervisor. So these are two types of or examples of hypervisors. Now uh, their functionality always remains the same but uh, they, in the context where they are used that is moreover different. So Hyper-V is uh, mainly used in uh, Windows operating kind of operating systems. Now this Zen mainly is used for Linux based distributions like in Kali Linux, OpenSUSE, Fedora, Red Hat and all those kind of stuffs. So uh, to understand this, uh, we have this part or this domain. This is the VM host server environment and this is another domain. So we'll consider this as domain 0 and domain 1. So basically in Zen hypervisor architecture, we have two different kinds of domains that is domain 0 and domain 1. Now mainly focusing on the domain 0 for uh, we have to talk about about the Zen hypervisor architecture. Now this domain 0 has got three main components and the first one is uh, your SUSE Linux OS. First is the SUSE Linux OS. So SUSE Linux OS is the uh, base underlying OS on which you are going to operate your uh, activities or do the task. Now, uh, for a kind of general information, SUSE is an acronym in German, uh, which when expanded it uh, becomes Software und Systems Entwicklung, and when in converted to English, uh, the software and the systems remain the same, whereas und uh, in German stands for and in English, and Entwicklung in German uh, stands for development. In English so it's like software and systems development so that's where the name uh, came from SUSE that is SUSE Linux OS so it's based on a German company uh, and the logo of SUSE uh, appears to be like a chameleon so you can find on the internet for that that's like a general idea for this now uh, we mainly use SUSE Linux OS in this and uh, this is one primary component then second and this SUSE Linux OS is mainly used for graphical and command line uh, interface for the administrator or admin activities. So for higher level privileges you use the SUSE Linux OS. So that is the purpose of this underlying OS, this entire architecture. Next you have Zen D. This Zen D is basically uh, is used for storing or it's used for storage of the configuration files configuration dot uh, properties file which are there in this for each of the individual virtual machines it will create those uh, individual kind of config dot properties file which are kept in Zen D. Next you have a modified version of Kimu. Kimu I have already discussed in the uh, implementation levels of virtualization. 
Now here, not the normal chemo is used, but a modified version of chemo is used. Chemo stands for a quick emulator. So this is like moreover like an emulator which can uh, mount a complete computer system on itself. Like you have an Android emulator uh, where you can do uh, many kind of things which you do in the app. At the same time you can do at the computer desktop. So that are the three main components of this domain zero. Now talking about this VM app management external and VM app management internal. These are two kind of uh, app management uh, modules where this is uh, dealing with the external environment and this deals with the internal environment. Now next thing you have the CIMOM agent. Now this CIMOM agent is basically for the uh, it's an agent developed by the IBM systems and this is uh, mainly used for storage productivity centers. Means these are mainly meant for storing some kind of uh, files or some kind of instructions they keep in this. And CIMOM stands for Common Instruction Module Object Manager. So that's what CIMOM stands for and that's the general idea for CIMOM agent. We will not go into the detail of CIMOM agent in this. And then we have physical drivers and Linux kernel and many kind of things. Now this was the domain 0. Next alongside uh, you have the domain 1 and you can see two different kinds of operating systems running on it. First uh, it is PV that is para virtualized OS. I will discuss what is para virtualized OS in my successive videos. And this is based on the Linux and this is based on the NetWare. So these are the individual virtual machines which are hosted. And each of them has four different components or four different uh, tasks like each of the desktops do. First is the maintenance, then is the storage, then this gear is for settings and this is for connectivity. So for uh, entire of the VMs it does the same activities. And then you have the Linux kernel for this, network kernel for this. And at the I/O system you have the virtual driver as well as the physical driver. So this is the virtual driver and physical driver. So uh, that's at the middle portion of the domain one. Then at the extreme end you have an unmodified OS running which would be a Microsoft Windows one. Uh, and it could be a version of OS uh, 2003 or Windows Extreme Professional that is XP. And it runs a guest OS mainly. So it also has the V driver and P driver that is virtual driver and the physical driver. Now you get all the calls that is direct IO path access uh, from this that is the domain zero to each of the individual virtual machines. I have uh, drawn this arrows here. So from there you can get all the access to these machines. And uh, mainly this Zen hypervisor does not support or it will not support the direct IO part from this VMM but it has to go through this that is do from domain zero it has to go to each of these virtual machines. So uh, that was all about the top level sections we have discussed. Next moving down we have the physical machine. So this machine is like moreover not the ordinary one but it has got some kind of additional uh, settings or plugins in that. So it is uh, for the IO and platform services. You have mainly the disk here that is for IO read write access. Then you have the LAN uh, that is local area network. Then you have one component called as BMC. BMC is the <coughs> baseboard management controller. All for the uh, like for at, it is uh, dealing at the microcontroller and microprocessor level. Then you have the IPMI that is intelligent platform manager management interface. So it's like more over related like uh, AI related stuff but not uh, too much into that. Just uh, like kind of uh, an artificial intelligence imparted to that chip or board. Then you have the ACPI. ACPI stands for the Advanced Configuration and Power Interface. So it is mainly uh, dealing with the power controlling and configurations like uh, when to wake up the signals and all the internet uh, like ports and all related to this and the interrupts handling and all comes under this power control management section that is the ACPI. Uh, next you have the physical machine that is the hardware itself and then you have the memory in the CPU the underlying OS which is running x86 and x86 64 and EM 64T as well and alongside you have the AMDB that is advanced micro devices of virtualized server AMDB and an example of this Intel VD that is virtual terminal. So well that was all about the Zen architecture so it appears to be a bit big but that's not a problem. It's like a, uh, it's very easy. 
uh, to draw this and to replicate these things. So that was all about the Zen hypervisor architecture in cloud computing. So hope you enjoyed this video. Found this video helpful. Please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching this video.